biblical history can be accurately presented to be close to 6,000 years. This evidence is backed up through 4,000 years of generations that can be tracked all the way up to the birth of Jesus around 2,000 years ago. But, can 6,000 years be proven by science? In the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, science is defined as knowledge, or a system of knowledge, covering general truths or the operation of general laws. Especially as obtained and tested through scientific method, which is the collection of data, through observation, and experiment. What is a false narrative in science? There have been hundreds of theories on the age of the universe, Earth, and humans. Some theories have evidence, and data records for a young Earth, but then evolutionary scientists say, that's wrong. Because, you have to have 14 billion years for the universe, and 4.6 billion years for evolution, to occur on the planet. This points to scientists, who are unwilling to look at the real evidence and data. Because, it does not automatically fit their narrative of, how short life, and the universe has existed. For instance, if numerous scientists have concluded that, the sun could be shrinking in size, based on careful measurement, data, and special calculations, using the scientific method, pointing to a young Earth. Then other scientists cannot just say that, it has to be wrong, because it doesn't fit with their theory. A true scientist does not start out by saying that they need 4.6 billion years for something to be true. A true scientist looks at the data before coming to a conclusion. In 1979, John Eddy and Aram Bornatsian found evidence that the sun has been decreasing in size about 0.1% per century, or about 5 feet an hour. Obviously, that doesn't sound like very much, but if you go back in time about 100,000 years, the sun would have been twice the size that it is now. Meaning that, it would have been impossible for any life to have existed, much less, evolved. When evolutionary scientists read the research, they immediately said that, it was wrong. Because, they need 4.6 billion years of normal solar activity, for life to evolve. They immediately began to come up with other theories, in order to support their narrative of, how life began. So, in 1980, Erwin Shapiro released his findings in the Science magazine, where he revealed no evidence for a shrinking sun. His research was based on calculated studies of transits, of the planet Mercury around the Sun. And his theory made perfect sense, if the Sun's diameter has been larger in the past, then the transit time of Mercury should have been longer, than it is today. But, his own report stated that, there was no significant change. What does this mean by significant? Well, his regression analysis yielded, a decrease in the solar diameter of under 0.2 seconds, of arc per century, at a confidence level of plus 90%. This is exactly like saying that, a diet cola has zero calories, since the diet cola has less than 1% calories, they round down to indicate that, it has zero calories, when in fact, it has 0.9 calories per 12 ounces can. So, on the universal scale of measuring the sun's shrinkage, this theory now falls in line with the Eddy and Bornatzian data research. In 2001, further research discovered by measuring neutrinos in the upper atmosphere, scientists determined that the sun runs on nuclear fusion. Electron neutrinos are produced in the sun as a product of nuclear fusion and can be accurately measured in the Earth's upper atmosphere. This showed scientists that, the Sun is deriving its energy from the fusion of hydrogen into helium in its core, and not from gravitational contractions, which is how Eddy and Bornatzian calculated the data in the first listed theory. But which theory is right? Eddy and Bornatzian's theory is based on calculations, over a 400-year analysis. And this 2001 theory, can indeed measure how the Sun converts its energy, but does it say anything about the Sun's size being consistent? There is no way to measure, whether the Sun is shrinking using this theory that, the Sun's energy is from nuclear fusion. All it can state is that, if the Sun is powered by nuclear fusion, the gravitational forces do not impact the size of the Sun, even though the data points to our Sun shrinking. But, here is the problem with a nuclear fusion source. All young suns have less luminosity than that of older suns. This is called the faint young sun paradox. As the sun burns up its energy, it becomes brighter, which means that in the past, the sun was less bright. So now, scientists can now determine, how brighter the sun will be in the future, based on these neutrino measurements. This also means that, one can determine how less bright our sun was 4.6 billion years ago. 25% less bright. 
Even if the sun was just 6% less bright, this would cause the Earth to have an ice age, over all the continents. Imagine the whole Earth frozen, until the last 10,000 years. But again, the scientists are stating that, this can't be right. Because, they need 4.6 billion years for the Earth, to prepare for evolution. So, even though their own calculations are right in front of them, they don't accept it, because it goes against their presumed conclusion. So, a long time ago, it seems that our sun was a superstar destroyer, making it impossible for any life to exist, much less evolve. Okay. So, maybe not that type of superstar destroyer. But, if the sun has been around for billions of years, so by all evidence, the sun was either too bright in the past. Or, it was twice as large 100,000 years ago, making our little planet a fireball in space. What about 500,000 years ago? Earth, wouldn't, even, be here. Now we're back to the original theory, that refutes all other theories, intelligent design. The Bible says, God spoke everything into existence 6,000 years ago, and there is ample evidence, for the creation of our young son. Don't give in to peer pressure that says, you need, billions, of years, to be here. 